Good afternoon. How are you? Happy New Year, first and foremost. You still hungover? How did that go? Hope it went alright. I hope you're okay. It is time to do a favorites video today. I'm realizing as I'm looking at my things, I didn't buy enough makeup last year. I bought other products that kind of helped with other things and I forgot to buy too much new makeup. So just like last year, my video is going to be things that I liked and are very much favorite things in the last year. One, two, three of them are makeup. I only chose these six items because the other ones are very heavily skincare items. They are very much this skincare product did this and this one did this and I like this for these reasons and they changed my life. For those ones I'm going to talk about in a skincare video which will either be up this week or next week. If you haven't been watching my videos and haven't noticed, I found a new nude palette this year. A palette by Too Faced called Born This Way, The Natural Nudes. I've used this palette, uh, don't fall out of my hands, every single day. Whether it be for work, whether it be for any kind of events, I've been to a wedding this year, an engagement party, I've been to a whole lot of different things. I'm comfortable wearing nudes. I'm wearing it today as well. It's a very easy to use palette. I have cool neutral skin. So all these colors work with my skin and I love them all, except for maybe these pink ones. Would be very hard for me to use because they're pink, but I'm pink, so it's not gonna look bad. It's just pink is hard for me to use. And that has become my favorite absolute go-to palette. Are there other neutral nude palettes out there? Absolutely, but I haven't found them yet. And if I have, I haven't tried them. So for 2022, this palette has been groundbreaking for me because I've been going into different palettes. I've got like nine different palettes and all of the nudes are done. I then recently discovered that this palette has a sister palette with deeper colors and it's called Sunset something, and it's got warm tones, deeper warm browns, and I looked at it like, hmm, I mean, you're next, you know, but I'm not warm toned yet because there is no sunlight, and when there is, I'm inside, so we'll see. Look out for that next year. <laughs> Another thing I found was my setting powder. I was using the Ben Nye Colorless Translucent Powder, and it was working fine, and I was getting oily, and I just kept it in my bag and whatever, and then I found Laura Mercier's Translucent Loose Setting Powder. This is what it looks like on the outside. I got the one that was like extra blur, ultra blur. So there are two of these ones. There's an original one and one that is, from what the lady told me, ultra mattifying and ultra blur, which is this one. I think it's like a couple dollars, maybe four or five dollars more. I, I could be wrong, but because I got it in the middle of the year and it's now the next year. Um, but this has done wonders for me. And I think it's partly this product and the next product I'm gonna show you, but also it's a combination of my skincare. So just keep that in mind. Like if your skincare is working, these products are really, really great. If it's not, and you're looking for a makeup alternative to help, it might not work. But this has been incredible. It's been so light. I can walk out in the sun and not look like I have an abundance of powder on my face. It keeps all of the, I don't want to say imperfections because I don't like that word, but it blurs the lines, it blurs uneven skin tone, and it blurs the pores. So there's that one, Ultra Blur by Laura Mercier. I feel like I should have done all my makeup products last. I'm gonna leave this one for the end. All right, the next three are not makeup products. One of them is a hair product. I dye my hair, doy, and the ends of my hair have been blonde for a few years now. I always dye my hair, I always change it. I straighten it as well because I can't curl it. And if I could curl it, I would curl it. So I have heat damage, I have um, bleach damage. I do use Olaplex's shampoo and conditioner, the Bond something shampoo and conditioner, and they work really well, but the ends are still dead because I don't use a treatment. Until in November or October, I bought this. Olaplex number eight, Bond Intense Moisture Mask. This guy, you put it, like you shampoo, you condition, you damp, dry your hair, put it in for about 10 minutes, I think. I was told you can put it in for longer, but then I was also given a disclaimer that the longer you have it in, the more it might make your hair look oily, I guess, because it is very thick. I left it in for 10 minutes and I wish I left it in for longer because my hair is really thick anyway, and it's kind of really dead. But this, I've used it once, so maybe I bought it in November or December. The plan was to use it once every month, or it's like once every three or four washes, but I wash my hair once a week. So once a month, I'll use this treatment. I used it once and it was like, for the next week or two, my hair was soft, it was silky, it was smooth. I straightened it and it didn't smell like it was burning. It wasn't frizzy when I straightened it, like I didn't look like a witch, it went straight down. 
and it smelled nice. So this is one of the products that I will definitely be going back to. Whether or not I find other hair masks, because I'm sure other ones exist. The reason I don't usually do it with hair masks is because I have dyed hair and I always get worried like is it going to change the color like keratins for instance it's not really recommended you do keratins with dyed hair this has been great Olaplex has turned out to be a really great brand I, I believed it when people told me about it like Olaplex is great try Olaplex but I was also told that a whole lot of other brands were great and they weren't Olaplex has done a lot for my hair and this mask is something I'm going to keep coming back to and keep buying because it was beautiful it did beautiful things to my hair Number three. <laughs> number four. And I'm going to put this at number four because it's embarrassing and hopefully you'll forget about it by the end. I'm very white and I don't tan easily. So wearing sunscreen while it protects my skin does nothing for my skin. Like in the sense that I'm still very pale. I'm going to let you know I've tanned <laughs> now. I'm like two shades darker and I'm still pasty. I'm still pale as shit. But... This is oil, <laughs> infused coconut oil, it's by Reef. It smells nice, I don't normally like the smell of coconut. It's too overpowering and it makes me kind of gag, that fake coconut smell. Real coconuts don't really have a smell. Fake coconut smell just, uh, it makes me feel sick. But this doesn't have that reek. It smells really nice, it smells really summery. Do I wish it came in for Penny? Yeah, because that also smells very summery or vanilla or something. The thing I love about this oil is that it pretty much dries matte. So when sand gets blown on you or kicked on you or whatever, cause you're at a beach and it's just normal, it doesn't stick to you completely. I love this product and I did go up two shades and I didn't burn burn, like I burned a little bit, but it went from burn to tan. It didn't have an intense peel. It wasn't too painful. I didn't reek of coconut. Oh yeah, and it wasn't patchy. Look into it because it is really good and I tanned. I've only been to the beach once, so that's why you can't tell. I can. I can tell. But that's a really, really exciting thing that I've discovered and I will be using it forever unless something better comes along. But I've tried a couple of different oils and sunscreens and this one is great. This next thing, I was working at a gig um, for this gala or this function, this fundraiser, and on the table were samples of this perfume as little gifts. What are the gifts called? favors. One of the sponsors for one of the gifts was Chloe, the perfume. And so I don't know if it was the head of whoever was hosting that party or if it was the sponsor themselves gave me one. So I've had a sample of Chloe's Nomad. It's finished now because oh, it's got like four drops in it. It is so good. It is so good. I've worn it every single day. The only reason it's only got a few drops and it's not completely empty is because I panicked and had to buy a new perfume. But holy shit. I... This is going to be my signature perfume from now on. It used to be Miss Dior's Blooming Bouquet. And do not get me wrong, I love that perfume. But it's also like $250 a bottle and I go through it like... <laughs> I w that was my signature smell for years, $250 to be spending every couple months. It's a lot of money and $250 was the big bottle. The small bottle was $200, but it's like, it's a lot of money. This is just under $200. This is the sample size. The actual bottle, the small bottle is just under $200. It is so good and it is so worth it. It is heavier than the Miss Dior Blooming Bouquet, but it's still floral and light. It's hard to explain. It's so hard to explain. When I first tried it, I was like, is that cinnamon? It's not but it's something, it's like a zesty autumn and summer and spring and winter smell. And I love it, I love it. Have I talked about everything else? Cool. I <laughs> was using the Urban Decay setting spray and this is before I found out they had a matte one. I recently found out they had a matte one, but my sister showed me this, the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish, is that what it's called? Airbrush Flawless Setting Spray. And this has been such a beautiful thing that I own. It does everything that I thought setting sprays were supposed to do. But again, I'm oily. I was using a setting spray that was for normal skin. This one mattifies. It mattifies and it glues everything. It feel like it does what it's supposed to, as opposed to the Urban Decay one, which again, I don't think it was for my skin, but it wasn't doing what I thought it was supposed to. I was getting oily in a couple hours. This one, if you watch my makeup videos, I apply after I put my makeup on and then I powder my face one more time because I'm oily, totally um, optional because it does dry matte. I just do it for extra, you know, just extra. 
it has been such a revolutionary product, a revolutionary part of my makeup routine that I don't think I'm ever going to change from it because every other thing that I found, it doesn't have better reviews than this. And also every other thing I found has been really expensive. But that's that product, the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Setting Spray. Airbrush Flawless Setting Spray. Game changer. I kind of want to do an honorary mention here. <laughs> I, when I had my eye surgery, which was sometime in February 2022, I couldn't do anything. I have a whole video about it, how it took like three months for me to recover. The first two weeks I was just out blind, I couldn't see and I couldn't do anything about it because I was healing. And I started listening to this book series, which my friend recommended it for like a year or two. And I was like, yeah, I'll get to it, I'll get to it. I started listening to it when I was recovering from my eye surgery. And that was A Court of Thorns and Roses, that whole series. I did not expect it to be that good. It was so good that not only did was I okay, in the first book, I found myself like near the end of it, sweating and crying. Sweating and crying because there were certain parts of that first book that I related to near the end. And I just would kind of, I was so drawn in by it. In the second book, my like I, I got to the point of like, I called my friend and I said, I'm gonna throw up, I can't. And she goes, just keep listening, keep listening to it. The third book, I was like, I'm not ready for this. I'm not ready for this. I don't think I've ever felt this way through a book. I've read The Hunger Games. I've read Harry Potter. I've read all these books. Um, what was that other series that I read? The Game of, Game of Thrones. I haven't read Game of Thrones. What was that other one? They made a movie about it and it was really trash. Um, the Mortal Instruments series. That was the last series that I remember being like, holy shit, this is really, really great. But even that one, after like the sixth book, fifth or the sixth book, I was like, all right, we get it. Like, it, it, you can't do much more here. It's the one storyline and we get it. This series has blown my mind so much so that not only did I listen to the whole series twice, this is all on Audible, by the way. I don't actually have the physical books. But I listened to um, the author's previous series. What was... Uh, what was it called? I just listened to it. The one with the assassin. I, I just listened to it. There's like eight books. But, like, it was... Those books, that story, is pretty forgettable in comparison. I remember saying to my friend who recommended this author, these stories, to me. I remember saying, I miss the characters from the other story. I missed the other story. I, I connected so much to the other characters. There was more plot in the other story. And I'm now listening to it again. I'm almost finished the second book. <laughs> These stories are great. The third series might be great too. I wouldn't know because I'm obsessed with A Court of Thorns and Roses. Oh my god. If you haven't listened to that, please do it. It is so good. It is so good. So, I really recommend that book series. If you don't like reading, listen to it. The author is Sarah J Maas, by the way, if you don't know. I hope I've spiked some interest with anything that I've shown you today, but that's all I have to say about that. These are my favorites from 2022. Not all of them are makeup. <laughs> I keep looking at the tanning one like you don't fit in here, but you're so good. Thank you. So with all that being said, I hope you've had an easy hangover. I hope it hasn't been too daunting for you. Have a happy new year and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.